Hi guys, this is Robert with Daily Woodworks and the RecreationalWoodworker.com where we teach you how to build great furniture. Right now we are working on a project for a client and we need to make this into a knockdown unit. To do so, we're going to be using the Feztool knockdown connectors. So you can see I'm getting set up here, I've got my pieces laid out, everything's cut to the size. I have my larger components assembled which is gonna make it easier to for my customer to put this together after we ship it to them. That way they're not assembling every single part like you know junk from Ikea. Um, I'm getting my domino set up here. Um, if you haven't seen my video already, this is the Domino Dock by Ramon Valdez. Great little accessory for the domino. You can see I've got it right here. It's easy to pull out and then take over here and use. And then you can also very easily just drop it back in here and you can even use the domino right here but it's just a great way to hold it without it falling then I have the Fez tool domino connector set we are going to be using this end these guys and this guy and I'll show you how it goes together real quick so yes my workbench and my sustainers are dirty because I use my tools um, and I typically try to clean up, but sometimes it doesn't happen. So you have this end. This is going to be your female end, um, if that's still politically correct to say. And um, this is going to go into a 28 millimeter deep mortise. Then you have a drilling jig to drill out your hole. Then that'll come right here. You'll tighten that up. The male end has this little wedge. As you screw this guy in, it pulls this guy up. That bites into your wood. This is 15 millimeters deep. These two guys plug in together. And then as you tighten it down, that screw acts on a wedge in there and then pulls the units tighter and tighter together. So it will pull it nice and tight together and create a very strong unit that's great for knockdown furniture um, I use these on breadboard ends because they have just enough play in there that it will flex over time instead of busting off and it's just an easy way to attach breadboard ends your reference surface is incredibly important with the domino so I'm gonna need my plate referenced off of here and my plate referenced off of here um, I'm using uh, the 20 millimeter depth setting and then I'm using an 8 millimeter bit with this um, you'll change your depth depending on whether you're plunging in this way or plunging in that way. But making sure you mark your faces so you're referencing off the same edge because when this stands up, oh, it's kind of hard to do with the camera in my hand. When it stands up, that's going to be flush with the edge. So that's why we mark our faces. And now we just need to lay it out. And again, the more careful we are, the carefuler we are, um, the more accuracy we get and the easier this is. Now this is probably overkill on the knockdown connectors, but I'd rather have more and not need them than too few and need more, if that makes sense. Especially because this is getting shipped and I won't be able to like, oh sure, I'll run over and pop another connector in there for you. Um, so what I did is I started four inches from the corner and then I just laid it out four, 16, 32. My center point is 43. And then I came from the other side for 16, 32, 43. And I did that on both bases. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plunge our mortises um, into here. It's very important if you're plunging this way, you don't plunge all the way through and you, you stick it at 15 millimeters. So we're gonna come over here to our domino, set it to 15 millimeters. 15 millimeters now for the width you leave it on narrow and again like you only adjust the width of your mortise when the domino is on I've already got my fence installed and now I'm pretty much ready to cut so this is how we want our domino set up I've got my depth set I can reference off of this edge or that edge and that will well, actually I'm gonna reference off the plate for everything and that will keep my indexing correct so even if it, the domino itself will be slightly off center, that doesn't matter as long as you index off the same face every time.
now that I have all my mortises cut, the 15 millimeter ones, I'm going to take the uh, receiver for the male end right here. You can see the wedge that's in there. Sometimes these fall out, so make sure it's in there before you do that. Press it in and then just give it a like super bouncy because I'm overhanging the edge here. But give it a good whack, get it flush or slightly below flush, and you're good. Okay, now we need to go, come in on our uh, base here so that it can make that right angle. The setting for this is 28 millimeters, and then we have to do another operation where we drill out a hole for the uh, screw mechanism so it can pull together. It's very important that you keep your face, your front and back correct so that you don't drill a hole through the wrong side and ruin your piece. It really sucks when you do that. I've done that, don't do that. Um, but we're gonna mortise this out just like a regular domino, uh, except 28 millimeters deep to get the clearance we need. And then we'll flip it over and I'll show you the jig for uh, drilling out the, uh, the hole for the, the lock. The domino connector set comes with this wonderful little guide to drill out your hole. It even has like a little depth stop to it. It's perfect. You can even do dust collection because it's festal. But if I drill my hole right here, that is going to ruin my piece. So I need to flip this piece over to the inside or back side, the non-show side, to drill out this hole. That is incredibly important and don't forget about doing that. Okay, so to drill out your hole, you can see this is a really well-designed jig. It's sized the right way and you'll drill right through that. You can even adjust the depth on this for different thicknesses of material. So I'm gonna take the depth stuff up, off, push it all the way up. I'm then gonna slide my mortise uh, or my domino thing into place and then I'm going to lock it down. Now, I also like to take a clamp. This is a micro jig clamp. Uh, Festival ones work too. And then just slide that underneath to clamp that down. It doesn't take a lot of pressure and it's not entirely necessary, but it's a nice, nice safety measure to have. The kit includes this really, really nice drill bit. Um, has built-in stop collar. It can take the Centrotech stuff. You can see I've just got it in my trusty Makita drill right now. Um, very nice drill bit. Very expensive too, so take care of it. It comes with a little cover to put on it. Make sure you use that. So I'm going to turn on my vacuum. You want to make sure you bottom out on this brass ring. It'll want to stop a little bit about an eighth of an inch before that, but you want to keep pushing through to get fully seated and that will make sense in a little bit. The receiver is three parts, but we're only going to worry about two of them right now. It is uh, this little plastic guy, this metal guy, and then a set screw. Um, we're going to put the set screw in later, just like the, um, the pin on the other. So this is going to drop in like that in just a second. You should put this guy uh, in first. Make sure you get all the dust out of there in case your vacuum doesn't get it perfectly clean. Yep, even sometimes Festool leaves dust behind. But you want to push that in first. See how deep that goes? That's what you want. It seats all the way down. And then this guy, where's my camera, has like a little has like a little channel in it and that locks into that mechanism so I'm gonna have to knock that down a little bit more it'll it'll work it'll be fine but this is definitely the way to do it so even I mess up a lot actually and when you do screw up and you drill the wrong type of mortise in the wrong spot I should have had uh, my male end here where the dowel's sticking up now. You can fill the hole with a domino. You slightly sand and taper a three-quarter inch dowel. You can hammer it home in there to fill it up. 
and then you can flush cut it off and now it's not a defect it's a feature it's a design element when you mess up So we're ready to assemble. You can see I've done the sides already. Follow my hand around. And then, like I've done the sides and got them assembled. And now I'm going to do my bottom. This is the easiest way that I've found to do this is assemble the four sides. And you can see it's really rickety because there's nothing reinforcing it right now. And now I'll take my bottom and just slide it on. So if I did this right, all these pins will align and just kind of focus down the bottom section. Okay, so the back is on, but it, or the bottom is on, but it's not secured. So what I'm gonna do now is push this together. Needs a little love tap, not a lot. Three millimeter uh, screwdriver goes into the set screw. And if you watch that gap, you're gonna be able to see it close as I tighten this up. As I tighten that up, it's gonna pull that closer. Sometimes it needs a little love tap here or there. And then I will just work my way down to tighten this guy up. Okay, I've zoomed in a little bit closer, so hopefully we can see what I'm doing. So little set screw goes in like that. It's kind of a stretch, and I'm trying to do this and keep everything on frame. So two-handed is easier. But you get it, and then you just thread it on. And you can see how that's pulled it nice and tight. And then we just keep working around. So right now you see this gap right here. It's about a fingernail. As I tighten up on the set screw, you can see that gap open and close because it's wedge shaped. And as I tighten it down, it's now completely flush. So our next step is to finish assembling this guy and then trim it out, sand it out, and I'll actually paint and finish it with it assembled and then we'll disassemble it for shipping. So you'll actually have your alignment lines as unpainted on the dog kennel itself. And then if our customer decides to use glue to assemble it, it then becomes a permit assembly, but very strong connectors. We could ship it as one piece if we wanted to. We might. Um, it just kind of depends on what the customer needs, what the customer wants. But that is the Fez Tool Knockdown Connectors. I would recommend starting with the kit because the kit itself, you see I've got the things out of there, comes with everything you need. Like I haven't used these in the kit. I haven't used a lot of things in the kit. But by the time you bought everything individually and had a way to store it, you'd be at the cost of the full connector kit and it gives you a place to store it. So that's what I'd recommend doing. It works great with the Domino. And yeah, I'll show you some pictures of this done whenever we get it done. And that's it. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you want knockdown connector system, go to texastoolcraft.com. Check them out there and we'll see you next time.